earlier this year, our colleague, our brother, Chris Wessling, passed away from cancer at the age of 46. He leaves behind a young son, Lincoln, his wife, Lakeisha. She pens a letter to their son to tell the story of a man who touched the lives of so many people around the world. He did get funny stealing daddy's glasses. You little bully. <laughs> Hi, Link. This is our son. I remember thinking uh, they let us take him home from the hospital. Yeah. That means they can never take him away from us again. He's ours. Dear Lincoln, it's hard for me to write this, but I know one day you will ask me about your dad, Chris. He was taken away from us after his second battle with cancer. You were just eight months old at the time. Let me tell you a story. Good times. He was raised on the west side of Cincinnati, one of seven boys. Naturally, sports was a big part of the Westland household. At a young age, he had an infatuation with books and sports, which led him to doing some writing of his own. Growing up, it was always his passion, and he would even have um, things written out and you know, paint notes on paper, you know, these fine printed um, notes um, about sports. And we had this old computer. It was, uh, I don't even know what it was. He actually wrote like a magazine and spent, I don't know, a month on it probably, um, pre previewing football. And then it crashed and the, the cold computer crashed and he lost all the data. I've never seen him more angry in my life. <laughs> it took some time for him to figure out what he wanted to do in life. It wasn't until he started writing about fantasy football as a hobby that he began to think that sports writing could be a career for him. Well, he was too good a writer to be writing about fantasy football, which is how I first heard of him. I saw him on um, a message board. Not only did he have like the best insights into their who they were as football player, but he would like include parts about life and you just wouldn't normally see that in a, in a football writer. And I kind of knew, oh, who is this guy? I gotta, I gotta find this guy. The NFL Network is where your dad and I met. We played together on our work softball team, became great friends, and then fell in love. 10 months after we started dating, we were hit with devastating news. Your father had stage three esophageal cancer. When I put the camera in, saw right away the tumor. Uh, it's very memorable um, when I find cancer in anybody, um, and uh, especially esophageal cancer. It's rare, it's unexpected. I was a little stunned at first. Um, cancer doesn't run in our family, and it didn't seem like there was any like you know health risk that would cause anything like that. When Chris was diagnosed, he had you know, relatively locally advanced disease. And so what we first did was we treated him with chemotherapy and radiation in an effort to get him to a point where surgery would be possible in the future. And that's a pretty challenging uh, uh, treatment plan. And he honestly recovered even faster than we thought, I think. Um, and then um, yeah, it was amazing. Uh, and, and he seemed happier and healthier and just better than he had ever been before. After his final round of chemo, it was like a rebirth for him. There is that feeling of being forged by fire, like you can become a better person. It's a fresh start. There's a new chapter in your life, and it is what you make of it. And we made the most of it. We got married on Tybee Island in Georgia. Then a few months later, I became pregnant with you. <laughs> Wine is blue. Because we're having a baby boy! Oh, look at that! <laughs> he was so excited to become a dad. Little man Lincoln. Little man Lincoln. The hospital that you took your first breath in would be the same hospital where your dad took his last. A few weeks after you were born, we found out his cancer had returned, and this time it was different the cancer was in his bones. It felt like a gut punch. 
I think we all knew it was a little different that second time right from the get-go because there were more questions than answers about it. His last podcast was beautiful. He was fighting through, you know, the end of his cancer battle. That is a championship pack field. The last appearance I remember was after a Cleveland Browns victory, and he only had enough energy to do about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, but our friend Mark is the biggest Browns fan ever, and him and Mark were so close, and he was so happy for Mark, and he made sure he was there for that moment. I didn't know Chris was dying. I really didn't, you know. Um, but we knew that moment was special. Looking good, Wes, sounding good. Thank you yeah. for joining us. We love you, buddy. We love you. Love you guys, too. There we go, it's Chris Wessling. On February 5th, 2021, he passed away peacefully with me holding his hand, telling him how much I love him. The outpouring of love and support from all over the world was surreal. So many people coming together, grieving together. It was amazing. People in London, Australia, you know, Germany, just amazed. Uh, it was amazing. I'll never forget him as a patient. I cared for him a great deal and wished I could have done more for him or met him earlier so we could have helped him more. I share a story so that you know what an incredible man your dad was. I'm honoring his legacy to bring awareness to this deadly disease and help prevent other families from experiencing the same heartbreaking loss. The thing I'm most uh, I'm most happy about as as Chris's friend was that he met you. He would just be so proud of this job and what you're doing. And he'd be proud of that you're doing it now through the toughest times. Like it's gonna get easier, but he'd be proud that's like, yeah, don't wait around. Like make make this now, you know. Like, show our boy, like, what you can do. Like, he would be your number one supporter. He, he, he's here. Lincoln, everything I do is for you. You are the light of my life. I see so much of Chris in you, and I am forever grateful that he will always live on through you. With all of my heart, love, Mom. Lakeisha, that was so perfect, and uh, that was a was such a beautiful man. And um, the fact that you guys ended up together and created a beautiful person in Link, um, that was really special to watch. And we thank you. Thank you. I can't tell you how many times I've watched it, and I cry every time. It's just yeah. It's good though. Like one thing I've learned from you through this is, like I'm I'm crying watching that. How can you not? And to, to allow it, to feel it. Cause like we're here in the, in the Chris Wesleyan podcast studio that he, that he helped make, you know what I mean? And just like when we talk about him and when we cry and when we miss him, like that's celebrating him. Yeah. You know, the last thing I want to do is, is forget him. I, I've realized yes. I love talking about Chris, mm -hmm. like it, whether it's sad, whether it's happy, whether it's laughing. And like, that was such, such a beautiful. Yeah. Place. I think like I've learned a lot about grief. Um, it's not a straight line. It's, <laughs> We've talked a lot. Um, our group of friends, I think, has banded closer together than ever. And it's like every single night that I can still hear his laugh. And that's what I would rem want to remember because there were thousands of hours before we knew what would happen where we would just hang out with Wes and you get him going on something. And there is no other person I've ever known like him once he gets going on a topic. I mean, <laughs> I'll never forget at the Combine, the time when he went on like a two hour tirade about paper towels and how they're put together <laughs> industry wise. It's oh just like, gosh. he was a subject matter expert on everything and a, and a best friend. We... I stopped buying those paper towels, by the way. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, sorry, Chris, I can't them. use those paper towels anymore. No. <laughs> uh, you know, since Chris left, us that changed fundamentally changed uh, the show and it changed our lives and I think um, the the beautiful thing with Link being with us and the miracle that he is when you tell the story and you remember and see how it all happened where Wes got sick and then he was okay 
and then he got sick again. And in that okay moment is when Link entered the world. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. And when you look at Link and we see him and we get together, because we're all family. Link is yes. a nephew to us. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And like, um, that's the celebration of West too. So we just thank you so much, Lakeisha, because it's been I, it's unimaginable like how you've had to, what you've had to do and how well you've done it, and to be involved with a piece like this, and this, and a lot of help behind the scenes too, and everybody that's so great, remembering this, and remembering, you know, naming this studio after Wes is all because we love the man, and we don't want him to disappear, and he won't. I can't, like, whenever you guys start the show off with, you know, in the Chris Wesley podcast studio, I smile every time. Like, I love that. Like, I love talking about him. Like, I don't ever want to forget him. Like, that's like my worst fear. Like, I write in a journal. I try to remember as much as I can for Lincoln because it's just, you know, it's going to get to an age where he's going to going to ask about his dad. And that's why I made this for him. So that was the, that was the hardest part of the London thing was like thinking, you know, when they honored him there, thinking that they won't do it again. We'll, we'll always be thinking of him. And when, when we are here in the Chris Wesleyan podcast studio, like I, I think about the gratitude of us, like we're living out our dreams and Chris got to live out his dreams in terms of what he wanted to do for his career. And now to see you like living out your dreams as a producer too, like if, if I take one thing from Wes, it, it wasn't just that he was fine in between those two, two uh, you know, between those two cancer battles is that he had gratitude inside of him that I never seen from another person. And that, like, we don't we don't need that. Um, we don't we don't need to have that battle to have that sort of gratitude. That like yeah. we're here and we should be grateful that we have each other. That yeah. we have you, one of my best friends in the world. You know, and and because that's what he'd want. It really would. I know for us, like when we you know when we'd cover football, and Wes was a like a tape head. He'd watch everything, and I'm sort of a tape head, not maybe necessarily. <laughs> You're a tape dog. Yeah, a little yeah. bit in that realm. But like when you'd make a point, and he'd just say look at you and say, I agree, you'd think I've done my job for the day. And I think if you look at the job that you did, he couldn't be more proud of what you did. I mean, to see your career and how it's changed since you guys first met too, what you've done right here is something you can show Link forever. And, and, and there's no way to forget Wes because you see it in Link's eyes every time he smiles, frowns, runs around, he's just the cutest. He pushes me like every day, like I honestly think sometimes if it wasn't for him, I would think that, you know, all of that was a dream like did it really happen but when i see mm. link it's like no mm. like that really did happen like this little boy like lights up my life like he pushes me he keeps me going he shows me that the world is beautiful again because i've always been like a happy optimistic person and this kind of like killed my innocence but i see it through him like the little things that he gets so excited for like i love you know just showing him new things and it's just like i see the world through his eyes and i know that's what wes would want I know that he would want, you know, enjoy life and enjoy this moment. Don't take it for granted because it's, you know, it's not guaranteed. He taught all this, that, and beautifully said, and thank you again for putting that together and sharing it with the audience and sharing it with us. It's the first time we saw it, and uh, we're all floored by how special it was. And uh, uh, thank you, Lakeisha, for joining us. We love you. I do want to say one thing, yes. though. Um, I wanted to thank everybody that donated to the GoFundMe account. Greaves for putting it together. Uh, yes. I never got a chance to, you know, get on the podcast and say that because every time I thought about it, I would just get too choked up to even like mention it to you guys. But like that means the world to me. I tried to read as many comments as I could, and just like the world, just everybody grieving together. Like I read as much as I can, and it's just like it's so beautiful to know like what an impact he made on like strangers who never even met him. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. If you, the listeners, the, the outpouring of grief and support, I'll never forget that as long as I live. We'll uh, have you back when your Rams are in the Super Bowl. You <laughs> should give them some analysis. There Come you on. go. Uh, Lakeisha Wessling, thank you very much. Thank you for everybody for watching, and we'll see you next week. We love you, Wes.